China has hit back, accusing Australia of weaponising national security after Treasurer Josh Frydenberg blocked a major takeover deal. China's State Construction Engineering Corporation has withdrawn its $300 million bid for Australian-based construction company ProBuild. This comes after the government indicated it would be turned down on national security grounds. It's reported the Treasurer's decision is based on the company's links to the Chinese military. Beijing says the move is a political decision and detrimental to mutual trust. This is the latest example that the Australian government politicises trade and investment issues, breaches the principles of the market economy and the spirit of the China-Australia free trade agreement and discriminates against Chinese firms. Australia's act disrupts the good development momentum of China-Australia cooperation as well as damages its image and reputation. I'm now joined by Shadow Resources and Agriculture Minister Ed Husick. Uh, strong words there from Beijing. Is this a good move by the government? Hi, Julie. Well, clearly, uh, you know, we have flagged for some time that we'll be taking a closer, as a nation, a closer look at foreign investment uh, proposals, particularly through the course of the pandemic, so that we didn't have distressed assets, as it were, being swiped up uh, by overseas uh, companies. So that has been on the books for a while, but it's got to be managed carefully. And this is the whole thing overall about the relationship with China. The government has got to be, in making its moves, uh, ensure that it is you know, quite open, transparent uh, about the way that it's going about these things. Uh, otherwise, you know, it will obviously provoke the type of reactions that we get. Uh, but having said that, we are a sovereign nation entitled to make decisions on foreign investment that we think uh, work best in the nation's interests. $300 million, it's a big bid. Yes, it was. It, it was. And a lot of these, uh, when you look at in terms of foreign investment itself, a lot of the foreign investment that happens will happen of a big nature, big scale like this. So it's, it's not surprising. But again, you know, we need to think through the way in which these things are done uh, and to ensure that there's very little room for people to suggest that anything other than national interest drove uh, our decision making. Farmers now are calling for international borders to open to seasonal workers, saying they've already lost $38 million as a result of labour shortages. Now, the federal government said in August it would bring in 22,000 workers from the Pacific Islands, but industry bodies claim a lot of them are stuck in bottlenecks trying to get through state and territory quarantine. So what's going wrong here? The lack of labour, uh, the shortages that are being experienced by the agriculture sector, very serious, estimated 26,000 needed by March. The federal government, the coalition has been saying for ages that they would fix it in response uh, to calls by the agriculture sector to get this sorted out. You know, they said they'd bring in a uh, national agricultural workforce strategy. Hasn't happened. They put forward the idea of an ag the agriculture visa, that didn't get off the ground. They said that they would, uh, for instance, bring in a workers' code that would allow for freer movement of agriculture workers across state borders. That didn't stack up. The chief health officers said it was unsafe and it went nowhere. And finally, we were told that there are 22,000 Pacific Island workers that could come in. They haven't come in. And all we've seen out of David Littleproud, the agriculture minister, is not problem solving, but blame shifting, pointing fingers at the states. And the states have, from what I understand, been concerned about the risk assessments, given that David Littleproud has had not had a good record in making sure that the health uh, concerns line up with the ability to provide labour. And I think this is a real problem, and it is definitely something that is as a result, largely, of David Littleproud being unable or unwilling to work with his state and territory counterparts, regardless of their political background. Should the government be doing more to facilitate worker bubbles, then? Absolutely. The, the government should be sorting this out. The state and territory ministers wanted to talk with David Littleproud at length in December, uh, Julie, to go through with them... Uh, with David Littleproud, how they could sort these things out. David Littleproud hardly dedicated the time uh, to workforce issues, 
then slagged off all those state and territory ministers, coalition and Labor alike, slammed them as petulant children, has refused to work cooperatively with them. And as I said, they see that David Little Proud is the sticking point. He is the person that is failing to get this done. All he's good at is pointing the fingers at the state. He's not there as a problem solver because he's got no idea and no clue how to sort this out. A lot of farmers say they pay well, but Australians don't want the jobs. Why do Aussies not want these jobs, especially now, given the current climate? There's been some effort to try and improve the image and the work conditions on the ground by some farmers. Uh, I think there is a great opportunity here for industry bodies to take a leadership role even further. Uh, there is the Fair Farms proposal that uh, has got some farms registering saying that they will ensure that they crack down on things like exploitation. Unfortunately, the take-up rate on that has been very low. Only 30 farms, from what I understand, 30 operations have taken up the challenge to be able to demonstrate that this is the case. And I think there is a concern that has to be confronted that uh, exploitation does exist. It's not on all farms. There are a lot of farms that work well, but there are a lot of labour hire firms that are cutting corners, taking shortcuts, not doing the right thing by their workers, and it is giving the sector a bad name and it needs to be tackled. And again, I think this is something that not only industry can take leadership on, but the federal government can as well. And that will probably provide one of the biggest uh, incentives for Australians to go and work on farms and to prevent, to prevent what we're seeing at the moment, which is produce just lying on the ground rotting because there's no one around to pick it up. Well, that's the thing. What are the repercussions for Australians at the checkout then? Because this has a flow-on effect. We will be feeling this very, very soon, if not already. That's a good point, and that is very much a concern, that if there isn't uh, enough supply, then you know what happens if the demand is there and the supply is low, you'll see prices increase. It'll also impact on our ability to earn export dollars as well, because we do export you know, basically 75% of what is produced in this country. So we do, it's important not only for local consumers to get the prices and the quality that they're used to, but also to ensure that we get the export dollars flowing. And again, this comes back to the federal government cannot just think its only role is to blame states and territories. It needs to. David Littleproud today should be calling for a meeting with all his state and territory counterparts, not doing megaphone diplomacy through the media. He should be convening a meeting with all his counterparts sitting down with them and trying to sort through these issues because farmers cannot afford to lose so much of their income because the federal government thinks that blame, blame shifting, not problem solving, is their biggest thing right now. We have to leave it there. Before I do let you go, though, Ed Husick, I've got to say I have bookshelf envy. That's quite <laughs> impressive what's happening behind you there. <laughs> it was a COVID project, I can tell you that, Julie. It was a COVID. But I get a lot of reactions. People think they don't like the idea of lining everything up in colour. Uh, uh, hey, I'm with you. <laughs> Shadow Resources and Agriculture Minister Ed Husick, thanks so much for your time. All the best.